Xenical or Orlistat. Now, some of you that have been around for a while have likely heard of Xenical. You might have also heard of Ali. A-L-L-I is another low-dose version of Orlistat or Xenical that is also available. And maybe even some of you that have struggled all your life with your weight, you might have even been on this medication before. In fact, next to fenteramine, Xenical is probably one of the oldest weight loss, weight management medications that has been on the market or has been approved by the FDA, and it's been around since 1999. So if that's the case, why has it taken me so long to actually talk about it? But before we dive into that, welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And before I get into it, I need you to hit the subscribe button down below to not only keep boosting up my ego with all the wonderful subscribers that I'm getting, but to also make sure you don't miss another episode. And further, you need to check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. I'm on the tick, the talk, the gram, the book, you name it. We are out there and I post content there regularly where we usually only have one video a week on here. So you definitely want to go and check out those other channels as well. If you are struggling with your weight, check out our website, healthevolved.co.co as in O as in orange for further resources. And you can also book a free consultation with myself for additional support on your weight management journey. So before we get too far into this backdoor issue with Xenical, I first need to tell you what even is Xenical. So Xenical is a class of medications called a lipase inhibitor. When it comes to the digestion of our food and absorbing various nutrients, our body basically takes the complex molecules and nutrients that we eat via our food and has to break it down into its smallest form in order for it to be absorbed via our intestine to enter our bloodstream and for our bodies to actually utilize it. And usually this process starts in our mouth with our teeth pulverizing whatever it is that we're eating. A couple of enzymes get added in to start the breaking down process. It then goes down into our stomach where basically it's like a washing machine where our stomach further breaks it down via mechanical crushing and all that kind of stuff. More acid enzymes are added in to further break things down. And finally, and I believe it's called chyme or chime or something like that, if I can remember from back in grade 11 biology, is then created, which then enters our small intestine. And of course, the chyme then enters our small intestine where it meets more enzymes, more chemicals to get further broken down. And as you can kind of see for this graphic right here, this is the process that happens with fats. They go from these complex molecules and broken down into smaller little bite-sized pieces that our intestine can actually properly take up and absorb. And when it comes to fats in particular, one of the enzymes that helps to break down fats, as you can see in this graphic, is lipase. So a lipase inhibitor like Xenical does exactly what its name implies. It inhibits lipase. And if lipase is inhibited, then the fats that are in our digestive tract don't get broken down into smaller molecules. And therefore, if fat is not broken down, it is not absorbed. So then less calories from fat are ultimately absorbed and taken up by our body. So that reduces the amount of energy our body is ultimately absorbing. And of course, if this leads to a great enough reduction in, in calories being absorbed and it creates a calorie deficit, then an individual can actually lose weight. In the case of Xenical, this was obviously found to be the case or the drug would have never come to market for weight management. And in fact, in a two-year study by Davidson and Friends, what they did in year one is they looked at individuals taking Xenical and the focus was on purely with weight loss. And then in year two, they kind of changed things up a little bit with some individuals still staying on Xenical, but the main focus in year two was preventing weight regain. So to give you a little bit more of the specifics, in the first 52 weeks, so the first year, there was two groups. There was a placebo group, and then there was a group that was on Xenical 120 milligrams three times a day. And in this first year, both groups were obviously on a calorie-restricted diet. Then in year two, there was a few changes with some of the groups, which I'll get into here in a second, but everybody was put on a weight maintenance diet. So that was calculated based on what their current weight, age, and height were, and they were ultimately put on that level of calories to maintain their weight. And basically what happened with the groups is that number one, they kept the placebo group. So everyone that was already on the placebo in year one stayed on the placebo. Then the Xenical group, the group that was originally on 120 milligrams of Xenical three times a day with meals, 
What happened there is that they kept a small portion of people on that same dosing. So Xenical, 120 milligrams, three times a day with meals. They had some people that they were then reduced the dose of Xenical down to 60 milligrams, three times a day with meals. And then they also put another third of this group onto a placebo three times a day with meals. Now, what kind of results did Davidson and friends find? Well, in the first 52 weeks, the Xenical group lost more weight than the placebo group, 8.8% of their weight from baseline compared to 5.8% from baseline in the placebo group. Then, as expected, when we looked at year number two and we were trying to prevent weight regain, the individuals that stayed on the highest dose of Xenical, 120 milligrams, three times a day with meals, kept the most amount of weight off compared to the other two groups, the group that was at a lower weight of Xenical and the placebo groups. And the specific numbers for the Xenical 120 milligram group, so the group that stayed on the high dose of Xenical, they only regained on average about 3.2 kilograms. The group that was on 60 milligrams three times a day of Xenical regained about 4.2 kilograms. And the group that was then switched to placebo and continued to stay on placebo, they regained on average about 5.63 kilos. And as you can see from this graph right here, it gives you a much better illustration of kind of what happened in terms of weight. And as you can see, people were losing weight, losing weight, losing weight. And then we kind of go into the weight maintenance and you can kind of see how everybody's weight did come up a little bit. But the groups that were on Xenical and remained on Xenical ultimately kept the most weight off and lost the most weight over the period of the study. And I also do want to mention that the high dose Xenical group also saw improvements in blood sugar levels, insulin levels, and bad cholesterol. And further, in an additional study called the Zendos trial, where they looked more at individuals that had diabetes and obesity, so they had both of those conditions where the previous trials were looking at just obesity alone, and not everybody in this study had diabetes, they had prediabetes as well. But what they found with Xenical is that Xenical maybe prevented or reduced the incidence of developing full-blown diabetes, or at least delayed the time to the development of full-blown diabetes, which in either case can definitely be considered a win when it comes to medication management and weight management. So the results seem pretty solid. I mean, not too bad overall. So am I ever going to mention why I have yet to talk about Xenical? Absolutely. And let's get into the bulk of the manner. I was, I was kind of going for a poop joke there. I don't know if that quite landed, but regardless, there's going to be a few poop jokes and maybe this is kind of alluding to why I haven't talked about it, but let's get into it here. Anyways, what do you think happens when your body ultimately doesn't absorb the fat that you eat? That's right. It ends up in your bowel movements. And needless to say, for a large number of people, this equates to a not a very fun time. In fact, in the Davidson trial, they had a pretty dismal completion rate with less than 50% of individuals that originally started the trial on Xenical ultimately not actually completing the full trial. In fact, the main side effects that were reported were flatulence with discharge, oily spotting, fecal urgency, oily or fatty stools, and increased defecation. Basically, these individuals could not trust a fart, had to buy new underwear, and could not leave the house due to oily diarrhea. And unfortunately, these side effects are quite common, occurring in at least 25% of individuals. So hopefully that explains why I'm a bit apprehensive about using this medication, unless maybe you have some constipation, or perhaps you're my worst enemy and you somehow happen to decide to come to me for weight management advice. And thus far in my five plus years of practice, I have only prescribed Xenical once and needless to say, it did not end well. And I assure you, the individual was very aware of the potential side effects and decided to take the risk anyways, if you will. So that is Xenical. It is an agent that is available and it certainly could help with weight management if you can tolerate it. However, it is quite literally a shitty alternative to the other agents that are currently available. As a final note though, if you somehow decide to go down the, the path of Xenical, if you will, a couple other notes that you want to keep in mind here is that any of your fat soluble vitamins, so that's vitamin A, D, E, and K, you need to make sure that you're getting proper supplementation of those because those can actually get a decrease in absorption as well since they're fat soluble. Fats are not being broken down and absorbed properly, so you might not get enough of those vitamins being taken up into your system. As well, Xenical can certainly interact with some medications, especially if you're taking it at the same time as you're taking the Xenical. It might alter and affect things. 
And further, if you are taking Xenical, you need to take it three times a day with your meals, which in itself can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Anywho, hopefully that answers any questions that might be out there about Xenical and also gave you a healthy dose of poop humor. Until next time, my friends, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode. As well, check me out on the tick, the talk, the gram, the book, the tweet, the whatever. I'm, I'm on them all out there. At the official Dr. Dan is the link that you want to find. As well, check out our website, healthevolved.co. Again, that's .co, O as an orange, for further resources and to book a free consultation with myself if you need some additional support on your weight management journey. Until next time.